right. What's up, guys? Cool, John Sintas, Cutter Nation Baseball. Welcome to the Cutter Nation podcast. First of all, if you have not liked or subscribed, this is going to be on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can watch the video version or check it out the audio version. If you want to support us, you can like, share a clip, put it out there. That will help. We have hats, all kind of affiliate codes. We'll put that in the show notes. Um, my, I don't, you don't know about this. I have my own glove recently. So I, I created my own little, you know, nice. you know, this may not work for your strategy. We'll talk about that later on your viral moments, um, which, by the way, before it was viral, you did it against us. I about fell out my chair uh, before it went out there. So that wouldn't necessarily work, but we'll, we'll go over that. I hope you have a glove. I hope that you can explain how it works because it's such a good move you know what i mean and the amount of people that kind of like yeah. <laughs> lose their mind because what you did anyway anyway so anyway mitch lively he and i have been chatting a little bit on the phone recently i want to really get into his his process what he's doing um i played against you uh for a while you know unfortunately we never really got to partner up but the way I see it in Mexico, where I didn't see two Americans on any team, much less, you know, together. I saw a lot of couple of Venezuelans, yeah, you- I saw a lot of Dominican dudes that are together. I never saw like two Americans on the same team, you know? So of course, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you know how I was just being like, oh, America, English, hi. <laughs> let's go let's go talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love you, friend. So you know, I, I like everybody to okay. you know tell their story a little bit, but you know, if you want to start off, um, I, I'll, I'll give everybody a little uh, rundown on the uh, baseball reference bio, and then I'll let you jump in. So, Mitch, six foot five, two fifty, my dog. That's what I'm talking. Old mass. Wait, was that two fifty? Two fifty. Hey, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I'm playing like two sixty five. Oh that was like my college oh number. They never gosh. changed it. <laughs> two fifty, large human. That qualifies for large human for all you young kids. Uh, born nineteen eighty five. I'm thirty six or thirty seven. Susansville, California. Drafted by the Rockies in the sixteenth round, two thousand seven. MLB June amateur from California State Sacramento. Mitch Lively, thank you. Thank you for being on the podcast. Um, you know, I, 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 I go through this very impressive resume from 2007 and for all you kids at home that think that you can't do it, let me just, we went 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 12, all the way to 23, which is, of course, right? Of course he is. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I'm just so impressed by you, but you know. Let's start off. We, we got we got where you're from. We got what we're doing. You know, hit me hit me with, with the, the the main gist of what like how did you get there? Like first love of baseball to there because I love everybody's beginning story. The beginning story tells everybody so much of like how you get there, right? Exactly, exactly. Like my my story is actually a lot different than uh, most baseball players. Uh, you know, I fell, in, I fell in love with baseball when I was five years old, and just that was my love. But uh, actually, when I was a junior, I, I wrecked my bicycle, got hit by a car, broke my elbow, my left elbow. And um, I, was, I played football, baseball, basketball in high school, and this was right before football season. And I ended up not being able to play that year, so I taught myself how to kick and punt football. And it's crazy, but long story short, I ended up getting a full ride scholarship to Sacramento State on a on a um, football scholarship to kick. So I, I took baseball doesn't offer very many full rides, so I took the full ride, free education. And they told me, hey, you can walk on to the baseball team, or you can go play baseball here, no problem. Cool, dude, I'll do both. Like that. And uh, I go there for my first football season. And this is in December. I go to walk into, the, I go into John Smith. Uh, baseball office, and I walk into his office. And I say, "Hey, can I try out for the baseball team?" And he literally loud laughed me. I almost out of the room, like, "Hey, man, like we've been doing spring or fall ball all year. Where have you been?" And uh, I said, "Oh, I've been playing football." They said that you can play for us. They said we never even talked to a football coach. And uh, I go, "What position? What position do you play?" I said, "Well, I'm an outfielder." And they go, "Yeah, no chance, man." 
And uh, I go, okay, well, here's my, here's my number. If you guys change your mind, you know, these are the schools that were offering me to come play for them. Before I even got home 15 minutes later, they got a call. Hey, we heard you had a good arm. You're going to come out and try to pitch. And uh, so they gave me two weeks to get my arm in shape, and I hit like 92, 93, I think, my first time off the mound, and they're like, you're a pitcher. <laughs> so wow. that was my route. And then I played uh, four years <laughs> Four years of football, and then got drafted after my red shirt. I redshirted one year of baseball, but I got drafted after wow. my red shirt junior year by the that's, Colorado Rockies. And then, uh, well, that's 16 years since so then, you know, what about just, little league, right? Take me from a little yeah. league to that amazing story. Oh my gosh, Could I, I, I just couldn't imagine, like, yeah, you, you know, and like you walk in six foot five, 250, and then, yeah. like, you're not just gonna, like. Yeah, I, 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 I was six foot four, 190 pounds, but I was a twig. Everybody, you know, I was only 17 when I uh, graduated high school. So my first three college football games, I was 17 years old. I was still growing. Still six and uh, so a lot of the scouts and stuff, yeah, a lot of the scouts were passing on me and stuff because, oh, he's too skinny, he's too skinny. And I remember my coach, hey, look at this old man. Look at this old man. He's going to fill out. He's going to fill out. And then uh, finally I started working out, and I ended up putting on that mask. You're talking about me that went up to 95, 97, and, you know, just I've always had that will when I was a kid. We'll get to when I was a kid you were talking about. Uh, my dad was one of those dads with me all the time. Hey, play catch. Let's play catch. Or, hey, dad, can you throw me, can you throw me until my hands are blistering or until I can't do it anymore? I mean, he never said no to me. Catching, sitting on buckets, hitting ground balls to me in the street. So my love for baseball started following my dad around playing softball, uh, slow pitch softball tournaments from when I was like three years old, following him around. That's really where I gained my love for uh, for baseball, just watching my old man doing it. And it was just that something my dad and I shared, you know, it was just that time I got to have with my dad. So that's really what gave me my love into into baseball. And then football is what get, ended up giving me my education and actually giving me, ultimately giving me my education. Uh, my opportunity yeah, well, that, in the baseball field. That's an awesome story. Uh, I remember going to softball tournaments with my dad as well um, and just watching him play the game. And he was like, my dad was like, oh, my dad was always like a logical, strategic guy, right? But he was like a little fast, uh, a little, he was the guy who would just like bat a thousand because he knew how to just like dump it over somebody. And so he would just be on first and then the guy behind him would hit a double, he'd run the third, first and third, someone hit a home run. And I watched that probably like 10 years of my life and being like, you guys got this thing figured out. Like, yeah. you, you guys put up three spots like it's your yeah. job. And I remember being in high school and college and be like, why can't we just hit a little dumper, hit a little double, someone goes deep. Like, I don't I don't understand. Like, it just doesn't work that way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. it's so easy, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, oh, that's an amazing thing. I love that. So, you, lots, uh, lots to unpack here, right? So, you, you're, you're, did you, in your high school, right? You, you said you took yourself two weeks. So did you not throw that freshman season before baseball or were you like throwing the football around? Yeah. yeah. In college? Uh, in college, that freshman year, I actually moved away like seven days after I gra- graduated high school. I moved to college. I said, all right, I'm going to go do the football workouts and everything strong. So, I went down early and started getting there, but I was throwing the footballs yeah. every day. I'm a punter, you know, I'm a real athlete. So, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's crazy because kicking is so much like being a pitcher, right? Um, as far as it's my leg, it's my arm. So everything, it was the same thing. Like you can only throw so many bullpens a day. You can only play so much long toss a day. So, you know, I'm kicking and I'm getting my reps in. Well, then I have sitting around for an hour of practice because we're not doing special teams or I'd already done the, the lump sum of my work. So I was always just playing catch. And so that's how I really kept my arm strength up with throwing that football every day. And so I, I, when I went in, I really did. I just needed that week to get the feel for the ball. My arm strength was actually probably stronger than I had at the time. Um, but I ended up playing my freshman year. And I made a decision to redshirt my sophomore year just because I struggled with my football and that was what was paying for my schooling. So I just really wanted to dedicate myself one full year to the football. And then I went back my, uh, would have been my junior year of football and played my sophomore year of baseball. And ended up, and it's crazy because I was a closer, a reliever. I'd never pitched. And then my junior year, they moved me to a starter and, and then they moved me to a reliever. I moved all around. And it was funny because my wife and I were talking one day. She's like, man, were you good? And, and, uh, 
in college. And I'm like, you know what? I really don't remember my college career. But see, I, I just knew I threw hard, and I didn't really have a third pitch. I threw a, a subpar slider. I just threw hard and could throw strikes. And I looked at my numbers. I'm like, wow, how the heck did I get drafted? <laughs> like, legitimately, I got like a six ERA. I'm like, how did I get drafted? You know, but I think it was strictly off of my size, my uh, potential, knowing that I was only 21. I'm still going to continue to fill out. But uh, I always prided myself my whole life, man. I prided myself in outworking people. I mean, that's that's why you've gotten to where you are in just your, you know, as a player, but also in your business. Is it's that mentality of hey, there's always somebody out there that's better than me or thinks they're better than me that's trying to take my job, and I've always taken that mindset with me in everything I've done with baseball or in in life. So that's something I wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna change the way I was as a player and what I took to my uh, as I held yeah. as a moral as a person. Uh, uh, you know the work ethic. You know, I, I don't want to sound like that old guy, right? But like you don't necessarily. I think every generation has that back in my day kind of thing, right? But like, we didn't have the stimulus. Yeah. I try to explain this kids. Like, we didn't have a phone, you know. So like, as as you grew up, you yeah. learned your own obsessive compulsive issues and your ADD, right? Which is probably completely handled by throwing a baseball back and forth with a wall or another human. Right? And that's yeah, a lot of well, walls. Lot of walls. I've done a lot of walls. Yeah. Right? balls on tees, you know, and, and, and so you know, yep. it makes sense, right? There's that one thing that I talk about, you know, especially with trying to educate a lot of these parents is like, there is a way to like throw for your lifetime. And there is a way to like play baseball, even at a young age, all the time. Like I, a lot of the other countries do it. You and I, you and I experienced what is in Mexico. I don't know if you ever got a chance to go to the academy. But I got to go to the one in, in Mazatlan and the one in Monterey. And I'm like, I asked, I asked those questions. And I was like, well, what's your schedule like? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, how, how does it, like, how do you program your year? And they're like, well, they just come six days a week. I'm like, yep. the whole time? <laughs> like they just, and they, yeah. Yeah. Dominican, Mexico, Taiwan. Taiwan had the same thing. They would have these academies where they would go, they go and they get these young prospect kids, and it's basically, hey, school for three hours, and then baseball, and then living there. Like they're away from their families at seven to you know twelve years old, and they're training in these facilities to get their opportunity to play at the professional level, whether it's in their own country or over in the United States. That's ultimately the the goal, and that's why we talked about like right. there's always somebody awesome. out working you. And there's always someone putting in the work. And I get that question all the time. Ah, oh, you played 16 years, man. You must be so good. I tell people all the time, do you know how many people I played with that were more talented than me, had a better arm than me, or whatever it be, that they, they had this thing, that they were a higher prospect and I outlasted them or whatever you want to say. But it also comes to, right. do you want to be a grinder? You know, do you want to show up and do this every single day? Because there's guys, they do it for four years and like, hey, this isn't for me. Or or they don't have that work ethic and, you know, they're just on God-given talent. They're throwing 98 miles an hour as an 18-year-old and they don't continue that drive and that work ethic. And then the work hall, the work hall of being a professional of throwing 150 to 200 innings a year wears on them. So then the next year they're falling down to 96. And the next year they're falling to 94. And then the next year, you know, they're, they're out of the game. So that's a huge thing is just that, that maintenance, maintaining to your physical body and training the way you throw. I couldn't agree more. You, you and I talked a little earlier about our emotions and we're similar in our timing and what we do. Um, and I know you see a lot of the guys that are playing all over the world. Um, I, I, you know, do you have any... Did you, you know, you playing in Taiwan? Like I, I've only seen things online, right? I was not either. But, you know, Taiwan, Korea, Japan—they have such early separation of their hands, and then they way the way they move down the mound. If you don't know what you're looking at, almost looks like it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? And so, right? Exactly. What did you? What's the craziest thing you saw in Taiwan? Mm-hmm. I know, you know, Mexico is easy. I could just, you know, I saw degenerates throw a hundred and not get off the couch and do yeah. something like you just that's all you did yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy 
um, you know, Japan between Japan and Taiwan, I would say that they throw huge, lengthy bullpens. It's crazy. But, the, you know, you were talking about the different leg kicks and everything. It ultimately comes to the, the, the number one thing, which is the most important thing in pitching, is their balance is unbelievable. Those guys will sit there, like, you know, you got Cortez of the Yankees doing the leg kick. Like, everyone's like, oh, that's so new. No, that, that's been going around forever, my man. Like, that's not a new thing. He, did, he didn't invent that. He's just the, the first guy that didn't listen to somebody in a third eight ball said, hey, you probably shouldn't do that because it's different. It's like the same thing. You, you know, my windup, I have that, that arm swaying and I do all that stuff. And I remember when I was in the States and I was, I was working on it because it honestly added miles an hour to my pitching. It added two to three miles an hour. And I remember having pitching coaches telling me, Hey, I don't recommend you doing that. Like, I'm not telling you not to do it, but I don't recommend you doing that. It might, it might hinder you to get to the big leagues because it's something that's not, that's not in the bubble, in the realm. It's different. And I took that and I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I get one shot at this. I get one shot at this. And if this is going to separate me from somebody else, I'm going to do it. And so that being said, what, what works for you, what works for you as a pitcher, basically is the, the foundation. It's all the same, correct? But when it gets to arm slot and it gets to everything else, and there's things that you can twist that might work for you and aren't going to work for me. So I, my thing is to kids, listen to things, try it. But it doesn't mean you need to absorb that idea. Maybe there's one or two things out of that instructor that work for you. Take those one or two things and everything else is part. And over your time of working with different people or whatever, you're going to create yourself and your strengths as a, as a yeah, pitcher. I, I couldn't better. agree more. We, t- we tell everybody here, like, I don't care if it's me, Dad, Greg Maddox, Roger Clemens, like Trevor Hoffman, right? Let's not upset San Diego. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't work, <laughs> hitting people in the head look maybe we should, shouldn't do it you know what i mean like maybe we should have a little bit better of an idea on trying to like, like time up this move with that balance like you were talking about and try to put it in the zone it, it's got to ultimately go in the zone if it doesn't go in the zone then it's not going to work and so that that is the most important part about throwing a baseball when you're when you're pitching it doesn't matter like you said, if you're Nestor Cortez, it doesn't matter if you know you're a guy in Taiwan. Like, in Ta- like if you if you go down the rabbit hole, you know that it, here's here's my little hack. If you go to Google and you type in Taiwan baseball pitcher, right, and then translate it in Google Translate, and then go back to YouTube and search that, then you can find videos, and you can do the same thing on Instagram. You can find videos all over the place of almost any country. You just got to know how to search in their language to find what you're looking for. If that makes sense. So, all right, give me one second. Look like not bad, dude. It's all okay, good. It's all good. It's all good. It's, it got stuck too. All right. Um, anyway, so we were dropping some unbelievable knowledge. I was just uh, what I had said was um, what's cool about where you played is there's a little hack where I found some videos. Um, and what I did is I went to Google Translate, typed in um, professional baseball pitcher, and translated to Taiwan and translated Japanese, and then went back to YouTube and searched it and just unreal. Just really really a lot of information that goes on there and so you can just go watch these guys you know throw bullpens yeah you know i spent hours looking at that and then you know i'm that nerd that's like okay the guy's a hundred kilograms or a hundred you know um oh my god what do they what do they measure down there anyway it's it's metric yeah yeah. Yeah. just just right just just switching things right and just trying to like compare by and like this dude's throwing 93 and he's 160 pounds? Like, what? Five foot six, five foot yeah. eight. <laughs> right. And I'm going like, okay. You know, and yeah. so uh, those are the answers to a lot of these parents that they're, uh, does my kid have a chance? I'm like, honestly, anybody has a chance. But to your point, are you going to show up every day and master the craft? Right? Exactly. Right? Find these things, look for answers, you know, and. But the one of the questions that I wanted to get to that that you asked that, that that I wanted to know was you know I always try to find what what are you doing training wise that is allowing you to do some of these things right 
Uh, did you see any of the balance work that they did that, that maybe made sense to you that, that was like, oh, this makes sense? Yeah, uh, that and a lot of things that honestly, like I don't like talking about myself, honestly, really. But like the things that I changed a lot of my um, training, so let's say when I hit 28, I changed a lot of my training. And actually my VLO went up, my, um, I would say my recovery, my, my ability to recover as a reliever, to throw three, four, five, six days in a row in, in Asia. Um, also as a starter, to be able to bounce back on those four days, to feel like you're 100%, because you're going to have those days you don't bounce back the same. But I changed a lot of my working out to, let's say, if I'm doing legs, single leg. So lunges, um, step ups, split squats, reverse lunges. I changed everything to be more single leg. That way it's more stability and more, um, more explosive and you're not favoring one side rather than the other. And that being said, also changing my, my workout to more sports specific movements, med ball movements, because we're going rotational, you know, I don't like to say that word, but more rotational and med ball slams and, you know, just pulleys and a lot of stuff. So being more diverse in your workouts as well. You're not just, you know, there's programs where they're like, hey, just bench and squat and deadlift. Cool, man. Like, how's that working? Like, it's not, yeah, you're going to get strong, but is it useful to your craft? And uh, that with the Asians, I would see a lot of stability workouts. I mean, they're not going heavyweight a lot of the time. And, um, but more explosive works. And we talk about conditioning, like, you know, a lot of the conditioning get, is getting away from the long, I mean, Nolan Ryan's one of, is the best, one of the best pitchers to ever, to ever handle a baseball. And he says, run long, run long, run long. And like I said, I played in three decades. So I've seen the evolution of when we first started playing, there was zero strength and conditioning, zero. Like there was, all right, go work out on your own. There was no instruction. There was no anything. All right, I'm just going to do curls because that's what I see online. And then you saw the evolution of, okay, organizations are getting one strength coach that balances around to every organization and he gives you some ideas. To now where you have a strength coach at every level, you have an overhead strength coach. So the, the workouts that are available to kids now, it's, you just have to not want to work out to have, to, to not have the information out there. We had to pick and choose and pick brains when we were coming up. Yeah, so I think for sure. Just, there was no, there was no like YouTube fitness thing going no, on. That was like no, no. Yeah. It was just trial and error, trial and error, a lot of trial and error, and picking brains from those are. And that's the other thing I tell people. I said, no matter where you're at, what bullpen you're in, there's going to be somebody better than you, or there's going to be somebody older than you. Pick brains. So you're sitting there in a bullpen, and you got a guy. Let's just say he's he's two years older than you, and he's had the experience. Hey man, what got you to this point? What do you do? Pick brain, pick, pick his brain on everything, his routine, the way he throws his pitches, the recovery. Do those things, and and you know a mentor essentially. But those are the things that are going to uh, send you off to the next level. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I was, I remember playing. You know, fortunately, I could talk to Sergio Romo, Oliver Perez, Urias. And like we just like talk cutters, it was wild. Like they just wanted yeah. to like play catch with it, talk with it, and I was just you know I'm a big you got a boy good one. when it you comes got, to all that. You got a pretty know. good one, so it's, it's okay. You know, it's okay. <laughs> but it was just interesting listening to them talk about like how they did it, you know, and how what made sense to them. What was the? It's never like a technicality. Like, <laughs> Twin axis was one fifteen. And it was rotating at 2,600, like, you know, and like when I teach it here, like I always tell all the American kids, and I was like, you know, what's really funny about a cutter? And they're like, what? And I'm like, it's kind of a football. It's kind of a yeah. spiral. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of the idea you're trying to create, but you're mm -hmm. trying to spin it as fast as possible. Right. You know, and, and so when they start getting these ideas and see it, it's really fun to start seeing them taking over. And they're like, oh, that's it? I'm like, yeah. You just got to yeah. figure out where to aim it. And then, like. Now we're just adjusting gonna... here to here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we're just playing around with, like, okay, early, late. Like, but we're still trying to go with it. And so, you know, in, in Mexico, it was kind of interesting because just watching all of them not have these resources, but, like, still being unbelievably, you know, um, just, like, ingenuitive and creative in their training, you know, like, 
I in Mexicali, I remember watching their other starting pitcher the day after he started do one legged hops up that whole double decker thing. Like and yeah. he would go up his right leg, down his left leg, up his right leg, down his left leg, and then switch. And I was just like and then you do it straight up, side angle, otherwise I'm like that's I'm like, that's unreal. If you if you have that, oh, I don't have a gym. I have a place. Well, that's that's a that's an excuse, right? Right. I I I played year round for twelve straight years, no off season. Like two weeks is the longest I would take off. And I've gone on, especially in winter ball. I've gone on honeymoons. I've gone on vacations with my wife in the mid season that were booked because I wasn't planning on playing winter ball that year. And I would tell these teams like, hey, I'm gonna leave for a week, and they're worried. I'm like. No, man, like, I'm in Paris and Rome, and I'm opening up my suitcase, stuffing it with pillows, and I'm throwing a baseball <laughs> in my room about, just so I don't lose my arm spot and stuff. So, like, yeah. you're finding a wall at a tennis court, whatever it be. Like, you're going to find a will. If there's a will, there's a way to get better. Right. You know? Like, how many yeah. times have you seen kids? I mean, I, I grew up I grew up painting a, uh, a square on the side of my garage. I remember I still, to this day, I can hear my, my grandpa. He's no longer with us. But I still hear his head, hey, aim for the corners, aim for the corners, aim for the corners. And then I would set up a tower and I'd practice just piping it. All right, we're piping, piping today, just throwing strikes, piping it. And then, all right, now we're working corners today, we're working corners today. And it's crazy, man. Like, it's crazy because those are the things, if you, you practice like that, and this is a crazy story if you got time, but my grandfather had passed away. I got the news my grandfather passed away. Didn't pitch that day. The next day I come out of the pen and there's, Japanese scouts, I had no idea they were at that game. I end up throwing that game. I come out of the pen, I throw two, two winnings at strikeout six. And I could hear my grandpa the whole time in my head, aim for the corners, aim for the corners, aim for the corners. And I was just locked in, dialed in. Next, not even, I'm not lying, three days later, sign my contract and I'm in Japan. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's, there's just things like, it's, you teach yourself. I try to tell people that the, to t you're, you're trained to become an elite athlete. There's a difference between an elite athlete and an athlete. You want to be the elite athlete, you better train like the elite athlete. And that's not just physically. That's like mind and being able to self-coach yourself out there. Because as a coach, you know, I can't yell at you, hey, stay back, hey, do this. Like, you have to know, hey, I just let one arm side high. How am I going to make my adjustments? Let's go through my three things that lead to that. Okay, I did this. And you're going to make the adjustment. So for kids, being able to self-coach yourself, is going to make you that 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 elite athlete. Yeah, that's I, I, you, perfect segue because I really want to get into like the fun part, right? Where I call it the Jedi to Jedi conversation. Um, you know, how would you describe yourself as a pitcher? Obviously, I'm the cutter guy, right? Like I'm going to play off the cutter. But you know, I've seen you use a bunch of different tools. But like your own brain, how do you see it? For me, my, my strengths are my fastball. I can throw anywhere I want, anytime, any count. I'm not afraid to go 2-0 to guys because I know I can throw my pitches for strikes. But for me, I pound inside. People are afraid to throw inside. Even at every level, you watch the big league games and all they're doing is throwing this and they're setting up a way. Guys are afraid to throw inside. Hitters don't want that ball inside. They want that ball middle to middle third, you know, or third away so they can really just extend and really at least unleash on you. My goal is I'm trying to just pound you in. I don't care if I miss and I brush you back. Then I can pitch off of that. But um, for me, just having, number one, a good fastball command. If you can't command your fastball, then nothing else nothing else is going to be effective. Because if I know you can't throw your fastball and you throw a pretty good slider, I'll just sit on your slider. Because the fastball is not going to beat me because you can't throw up a strike. So my thing, number one, is always establishing your fastball command in and out. And that's people don't understand. Oh, well, a fastball. A fastball is four different pitches. A fastball up and in is different than a fastball down and away. A fastball up and away is different than a fastball down and in. So depending on how you pitch it and how you tunnel it, it it can work differently. Now you were asking my strengths. In 2009, I was actually um, in the organization. I had the organizational award with the San Francisco Giants for um, highest percentage of three pitches or less of getting guys out. Like, that was one thing they pushed when we were young coming back, right? Hey, get them out as quick as you can. And so that's what I went to. All right, I'm just going to pound you in, great contact. Whereas we know that's not what they want to get to the big leagues. They want to see strikeouts or they want to see a guy that can eat in, that can go. And as a reliever at that time, I needed to figure out how to punch guys out. 
So that's when I developed my split. And uh, in 2009, with, I can't remember his first name, but I have a pitching coach in Cooper in San Jose, and he helped me develop my split. And that pitch single-handedly saved my career. Love it. Single-handedly single so, got split. Do you got, a, do you got a ball? Can you walk us through it? Let me go grab one real fast. Two, give me two yeah. seconds. Yeah, for sure. You're good. We got Mitch Lively for everybody that is uh, listening to this right here. Mitch Lively is the famous um, hidden ball trick guy. Uh, on social media, but I played against him for a bunch of years down in Mexico, and this guy is just an animal. Uh, part one of this is on the other episode. I will be putting this together on YouTube and uh, Instagram here soon, and, and we'll be getting it released back out here. But this guy's an amazing human, wealth and energy. So take some notes. I'm going to grab one too. Uh, I'm going to grab one too. One second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's do it. Hey, you were talking about your cool glove. I got pretty cool glove. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's a uh, Taiwan brand in Taiwan. So yeah. all my uh, and they put a Venado on it or what? Yeah, I had him put this on. So every team I've played for, I've had him put this on it. So I've never been a flashy dude, but I'm like, you know what? I was getting 32, 33. I'm like, this could be my last one. I'm going to do it. So, uh, so I went flashy a couple of years. But hand knife, if you're in Taiwan, I got a lot of followers there. Sorry, but. Hand knife, best glove in Taiwan and a reasonable price. Um, so I got my ball here. What do you want to, what do you, ooh, got you by split? Let's the, uh, so let's go grip and then let's go full thought process on like what you're trying to actually like what, what, what is it, the feel and then where are you going with it? Okay, for, so on my split, I'm going horseshoe here. So I'm going horseshoe down and I'm running my fingers over the top. And I'm trying to get both seams there. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I'm trying to see how I got both seams there. So I'm trying to get deep as I can on both seams there. And so I'm trying to keep a stiff wrist the whole time when I throw this. I'm too close to you. Yeah. So maybe a little bit further back on the seams. Yeah, right there where you can feel both seams pretty evenly on your hand. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking stiff wrist the whole time I throw this. Like people think you want to do that. No. I want a stiff wrist, and I really want to stay and see that ball out in front of me, and I'm going to pull. It's more of that motion. So that when I come out, I want to feel that ball, sorry, come out of my fingers this way. So it kind of rolls and tumbles. Okay, so you're basically trying to backspin it. What what axis are you on here? I, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm trying to go straight up, like as straight up as I can get. Sometimes we're going to naturally, we're going to get on the side and we're going to get a little it's going to look like a slider, but ultimately, if we stay on it correctly, and it's going to either come here, straight down, or it's going to run like a changeup, but harder. And then when this pitch, like, you know, your changeup, you're probably minus seven, eight. Most people, I'd say, on a changeup like this, I'm trying to be minus five. So if I'm throwing 90, I'm trying to be 85, 83. If I'm throwing 95, I'm trying to be 88. You know, I'm trying to be in there a little bit harder. So, uh, so is it light? Does it feel like it's light or does it feel like it's deep? It feels like it's deep. So I want to feel that deep in my hands, like almost like a fork, but not quite. Okay. And honestly, you can put thumb on there if you're not comfortable with it. You can put your thumb on the side and that'll really help it move this way. Yeah. Or for me, I go thumb off, but I feel thumb off on almost all my pitches. So thumb um, off. That's I, not even thumb I, off. That's thumb underneath the birdie. Right well, there. That's what I meant. I got huge hands. So yeah. um, it looks like a ping pong ball in my hand. But I try to go thumb right underneath. So it's just kind of under there. Like if I'm good, I can, I'll get a little blister right here on my hand. But I'm just thinking arm speed. So for me, it's not, I can't get long. As soon as I get long, I'm going to lose my split. I want to think quick, quick, and then out in front, straight, no wrist. So it's quick arm path with this. You got to keep that same fastball action. A lot of people want to get real casty with it and, you know, reach out. No, we're going to get quick, quick hand in the back and then we're jamming it downhill. It's yeah, that's what I was going to, you know, my memory, uh, I, I pulled up some videos and just watched. It's funny how um, how your brain works, right? Like, I just watched a couple of videos you be throwing, and I do remember you having a blurry hand. Um, yeah. That's what I, I talk about a lot of the times in creating velocity, 
it, you know, is, is the speed of, of release is really, you know, significant to the action of any pitch and, and especially in the illusion of the fastball. Right. Right. So what kind of action do you get as it goes? Are you, and what are you looking at on the catcher? Where are you, what's your starting point? So I'm looking at the catch. I'm aiming right at the top of the kneecap of the catcher. So I'm trying to throw it. So it looks like it's a strike at the knees the whole way. And then it just tumbles down. Yep. So they'll be strike, strike, strike. And then it tumbles down off of that, you know, cause then, and then you can throw your, like, that's the thing with the split, like it's more reactions this way, this way. But then you could throw your fastball off of it. it. Depends on how I miss with my fastball. Like, Ooh, let's, um, let's go into that, right? So, so let's go. Let's go. Let's just a little sequence here. I, I'm, a, I'm a big. I, I'm a big. So you you posted this. Sorry to cut you off real fast. You, you posted this on online yesterday. I think I, I didn't comment on it. Or I was going to comment on it. I didn't. But you were talking about pitch sequences, yeah. and for me, I'm not a pitch sequence guy. I am a person because. If I'm setting up a hitter and he whacks the first pitch, what's the point in having a sequence? So for me, I'm more of I'm I have my first pitch I want to throw, and then I'm reacting to what the hitter did off that or how I executed that pitch. So for instance, if I'm going fastball, let's say I have a lefty up and I'm going fastball away, and I miss off the plate, now I have so many options. I can either go fastball again, sneak it in there. I can go slider off that same spot back there, and he's probably going to take it because it's the same pitch out of the hand ball. Or I could throw my split out of that same tunnel, and now it's a strike, strike, and it's a ball, and then maybe swing. So for me, especially as a reliever, I would I don't like sequences. No offense, that's just me personally. I know a lot of guys who do sequences. Um, I'm just always been a reactive person. I, I like to watch people. I would argue. I would argue that is sequential, but that's more of the chess match of what it is, right? right? That's, yeah, a, that's, yeah, a, that's an option. We're running an option offense, coach. That's all we're doing. Right. Yeah, we're out of hand. We're out of hand. Yeah, right. Well, that's that's the game within the game. That's what you know. I I totally agree. With you. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you you never know. You're gonna you're gonna throw one pitch in a certain thing, and the guy's gonna react to it, and now you're like, oh, this is the hole. Yeah. Right? So, lot, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say, that, that's what I look for, right? It's like he does this, I do that, right? That's the exactly. jujitsu thing, like. And how do I use it against him? I need to show him three different things. So the sequence idea is more like having a good playbook that you're rolling right. into a game with. Right. And you know you can execute from all the practice and that you've been doing in the bullpen. You know, in a, in a right. life. Exactly. Right. exactly. Being able to throw your slider both sides of the plate. Right. Being able to throw, you know, different action in different locations with pitches. And that's the thing. As a pitcher, you have to know your strengths. And more importantly, you have to know your weaknesses. Because, you know... And that's a good thing to talk with your coach or with your, like, as a, as a, as a, as a student or a younger kid. 90% of the time, I'd imagine that coaches are calling pitches. I, I would imagine. But maybe going up before the game and saying, hey, coach, these are my, this is my, my two, these are my two pitches. This is my, I could throw for a strike in any count. And this is my out pitch right now today. Cause there's going to be days you might have three, four pitches and only two of them are working. Right. So, if you're going out there and your coach keeps calling your fourth best pitch or even your second best pitch, but it's not working that day and you didn't tell him, well, you're just hindering yourself. Right. So, hey, coach, before I really got this working or telling the bullpen coach while you're warming up, hey, I really got this working. Let's and get with the catcher, or get with the coach, whoever's calling your pitches and having that plan before you get out there and right. not just being like, oh, we're just going to wing it out here. Whatever he puts down, I'm throwing. Right. No, like. Know what your strengths are and your weaknesses as a pitcher day to day because they're going to change day to day. I've had days. I've had days. I've gone out there and I've thrown a hundred fastball. Or I've thrown a hundred pitches and I threw ninety one fastballs. I've had days where I've gone out there and thrown a hundred pitches and I'm throwing seventy sliders. Yeah. I, I have a day where I'm throwing twenty five splits. I have a day I don't use my split. You know, I'm like, oh, that's split. I threw three of them. It's in the back pocket today until I need it maybe later in the game. Yeah. Just so, smacked through three. Yeah. Oh, we got smacked. <laughs> yeah, or I do it and it's just not even competitive and I'm just wasting my time out here. So just having that's the one thing. We're stubborn. We're baseball players. We're stubborn. Right? We're gonna be like, no, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. Well, there's gonna be times you're like, dude, I don't got it. Let's just put that away and let's go with one and two. Totally. So uh, yeah. I just think a lot of when you say sequences, a lot of people think, Oh, I have to have a plan of how I'm gonna throw five pitches in a row. And that's why, why I get, you know, I just like to explain that. Like, hey, there's sequences, but it's not, it doesn't have to be a three pitch right. sequence. Maybe it's, right. it's pitch to pitch sequence. 
like you discussed right. earlier. Well, and, and, and I think it's just a good basis, right? There, we, we, I have this cool little sheet here um, at the gym, and I try, you know, it's just, it's for the kids to understand. I'm like, you know, you, you even just said it right there. The most common sequence in baseball is fast, fast, slow. No hand, hand yeah. stuff, right? It, you, and, and, but to your point, I can be down and in, down and away, change up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that is still a version of something a hitter has to honor. If you think it's fastball in, fastball in, split in, like, that's just, you know, a plan that works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I love that. I love, you know, hearing the Jedi from the guy right in there. So, so let's, let's, let's go a little further, right? Okay, so you're facing, uh, let's go with a common guy, Reno. We're, you're facing Hafed Abedin, right? Okay. This is right. I feel like the sequence is coming to play, right? Just so, just so you know, he's taking me deep twice. <laughs> he's got one on me too. He's got one on me too. That giant human, right? Yeah. So I have my own sequence that is like what I call my strikeout. Let, let, let's so, explain. Let's explain this human being real fast. Yes, please, no, you go ahead. Time. They've heard me say it. We've let's got, see if we can see if our numbers are the same. We've got a six six. 280 pound monster of a human standing up real tall Bellinger from the right handed side long stride keeps the bat in the zone he's not in and out quick it's not it's, it's not a long swing the bat stays through the path which are the guys that I tend to struggle with guys who can keep that bat in the zone longer are the guys I really have struggled with in my career uh, the guys that are in and out I'm, I'm like yeah you're non-factor for me um I mean, we're talking pop, gap to gap pop kind of guy. We're not, this guy's not dead pole. He's gap to bag out. He can take you off of. Real good off speed pitcher, but can also get to the fastball really well. So that being said, now we know what we're talking about. <laughs> and don't, you missed my favorite part. You know, he swings at 36. Yes. I played yeah. with him this year. Yeah, Amazing right? human being. Too. Good human being. Oh, yeah. Every time I yeah. talk to him, he's so nice. He's the nicest yeah. dude. But I, I remember that bat, you know, and I remember, like, uh, like I'll, I'll never forget. So my, my, I'll tell my home run story. It's my favorite one. So every time I face this thing, every time, I did not throw him one first pitch fastball, right? I knew he was cheating. This is where my sequence brain comes up. And so my strikeout sequence, A-Rod, Hoffa, Amador, Bregman, you name it. I'm going to have cutter, 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 fastball up, up and in, slide piece down the way. That's what we're running. Okay. That's what you're running? With a, with, a, with a big bat ambush, first pitch guy? Okay? Right, right. With that guy, yeah. guy right? And, and hopefully, which it does on him, right? Either get yeah. a take, but the hands start, sick. Now I get to right. the middle, run it off, roll over. Dope, got you. Right, and right. I'll never forget this, this one start in Mochi's. This is before they did the stadium. I, I, it's the first time through. through. We're up 2 nothing. We're in the sixth inning. And I'm like, literally just crossing my brain as they announce him hitting. And I'm walking in the back. I'm like, I've never thrown this guy first pitch here. Ever. I said, here we go. You just got to hit your spot. Let's do your thing. And I go 92, black, black. And it went over my head and sounded like a rocket ship. It, and I just started laughing. And I turn around and I catch it, bang the top of the batter's eye in Mochi's, and then it made this loud feet. clang. And I, it's a thirty feet beyond the uh, actual wall right. at four hundred. Just so yeah. you know, it's enormous. And he hit the top of it. And at that point, it was kind of faded, and I thought it was like cloth because no one had hit anything with it. And it clanged, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's metal." So I like there's like this shot where it like catches me like walking off the back of the mound laughing. Yeah. And our and our pitching coach like comes out there all pissed off and he's Cuban, no English. So we're translating through Sebastian Valle and like he's oh, yeah. at he, he, me he, caught me for, he caught me for four years, man. Oh, dude, he's a blast. Yeah. And uh, and I'll never forget. He's like yelling at me and I look at Sebastian and he's like he wants to know why you're disrespecting the game and you're laughing and i'm like disrespecting the game and he's like yeah he wants to know what you're laughing at i was like that's the farthest ball that's ever been hit on and i heard it i didn't even see it i just heard it i didn't see what it was man. it was wild man yeah dude, so, i've been there you were like we just want to make sure that you're still in the game next guy we go slider get out of it they take me out you know pull me aside drink, give me a talking to i was like 
First of all, I went six game up one run against those guys, okay? So let's just talk about that, okay? On a Sunday where the ball flies. You know, day game. A day game. Like, come on. Right? Yeah. And so, like, I'll never forget that. It was just one of the most, the funniest things, the farthest ball that game ever set. So, yes, like, if, if you, want to, yeah. you guys want to go that, down that rabbit hole on YouTube, Go Hoffa Amador home runs on YouTube. And, like, somebody's put together, like, all of his Taiwan and his, like, Japan, Japan. and his Mexico ones. And they're all just like, oh, my God. I'll, I'll be on there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure that, I'm sure you found mine, too. Hey, oh, my God. I, I, I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, man, you're a baseball player? You hit home runs? I'm like, no, but I'm giving up quite a few. <laughs> You know, people are like, oh, you gave up 22 home runs last year. I'm like, yeah, I did, man. Oh, that's not very good. I'm like, yeah. 250 innings, you're right. That's not very good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah for sure. come on, man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, All, right. All right, so what are so, you throwing him? What are you throwing so, him? For, for you, it's different, right? You said you're going cutter. For me, so you were talking, you, can I just step into something like my mindset as a pitcher when I'm going into a start is I like to look at right, left, right, left. Yeah, that's cool. But I want to know who my first pitch swingers are. I want to know the guys who are my high, 50% or higher guys that are going to try to ambush me. Because that being said, I'm either going first pitch split, depending on who you are, or I go fastball. Me? You see me pitch. 90% of the time, everybody in the stadium knows I'm going to throw you a first pitch heater. But that being said, if I know you're a, um, if I know you're a first pitch swinger, I'm going to throw that ball right here, up and in, top of the zone strike. Maybe even a little bit above or a little bit in, but I want that top of the zone because even if you're ambushing, you're not looking there. They're looking for that down, that ball to get down onto. So I feel like that pitch, I get a lot of guys early that are overly aggressive to pop up, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, so for, totally. for, for just that, I'm going first pitch, top of the zone, top quadrant right here. I'm going trying to go strike. If not, then I'll adjust to that depending on the swing. And then if I get a strike, I'll probably go back in there a little bit further in for a ball. If I throw a ball, I'm probably going to go slider down in the way. So then I'll go here to here, slider down in the way, and if that's a strike, then I'm wide open again. If I got a 1-1 count, if I have a uh, an 0-2 count, I'm probably going to go split out of that same tunnel as the slider, or I'll go fastball down in the way out of that same split trying to lock him up looking because he's probably looking up and in again. So for me, it's all on how I execute that first pitch. And um, you and I talked about this on the phone a little bit, how when we, were, when we came up, I'm going to try to get up a little bit higher, but when we came up, we were taught and as a hitter, you want to throw them here, right, right. in that window. Right. That's the, I, I want this movement, I want that the movement. Arm, the arm race, right? Right, yeah, I want, I want that. Well, that's all cool and all. When we were coming up, it, it was effective. Now everybody wears, from Little League to everybody wears these big arm guards. So for me, this is a non-competitive pitch anymore because everybody just does this. They do this, and they don't want that. So I change. Everybody has their hands wherever they're going to have their hands. I want that pitch. If my brush back pitch, I want it right up where their hands are. So I want where their hands are going to be is where I want it because I want that. I want that movement. For me, that's the movement I want. This movement isn't really effective anymore because of the arm, unless you're down at the knees with it. Because then you're moving feet, and then we're right. good. Yeah. But for me, it's still not the home. I'm not trying to kill somebody or end their career, but I'm also trying, you know, to just move them back a little bit. Right. So that up fastball, just getting those hands sucked in, opens up everything away for you, or doubling back up in there. So for me, I'm for Jeff, I'm going fastball up and in first pitch, and then I'm going off of that. I might double back in, or I'm going slider. I, uh, I made the mistake one day where I was like, oh, I'm going to throw a first pitch up and in, and the catcher calls, hey, front door slider. And I'm like, okay, I've been throwing him in all day. Like, all right, cool, I'll throw him a first pitch. I literally throw it, and I just see him like, remember a little big uh, uh, rookie of the year, he throws it, and the guy's like, doing that. I literally saw that, and he hit it, and I just looked at him. He's running the bases, and he's just like smiling at me because we were teammates that year. And he's just like smiling at me. I'm like, you son of a gun. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just like I said, setting up whatever you – setting up pitches and not being afraid to go. Like, I know everyone's like, hey, strike one, strike one, strike one. But this is where being able to throw your fastball 90% of the time for a strike, or being able to throw it will come in so handy. Because I'm not afraid to go 
because I know I'm going to come back and get that strike. So if I brush him back, that's done its job for me. Right. That's done its job because I know I can come back in and I can flip a slider in there, even if it's just a down and away worst case, he shoots it to the right side. Um, that comes to knowing your strengths, again, like we talked about, knowing what's working for you that day. But for me, the up fastball, for guys I know that are very aggressive, I like up and in, fa up and in fastballs. It's a good pop-out pitch. Um, for you, your strength to cutter. So it's maybe a front door cutter, depending on who it is. But I like you, like you said, down the way. He's cheating to that fastball, and now he's getting off the end, and you just got a ground ball. So I'm not a cutter guy. So that, for, that, for me, that doesn't, that doesn't play. But for you, you have a plus cutter. I would throw that all day long. Yeah. Until he thinks he can hit it, and then you can run inside. The, the first thing that I, I that kind of led me over there was: Do you know your numbers on your heater? Like spin rate? Yeah. Uh, twenty twenty four to twenty six hundred. That's yeah. the real answer, kids. There's the yeah. answer. He's six five, right? Probably what release high six eight. Six eight. Six, nine. Yeah, yeah, six eight. Six nine. So because I'm real high, I'm real high, to, I'm real high over the top. So right, so 26. Yeah, I'm I'm like seven foot by the way. So like, not only yeah. is it cutting, it's like we're we're coming from the heavens. I was a huge downhill. Yeah. Like that made the most yeah. sense to me. Like hurting, I like that's, the idea of vertical. Yeah. Anyway, that's what people they say, man. They're like, man, you're you're angry on your ball. Um, they go, it looks like you're gonna spike it. And it's gonna hit the ground, and it just pops yeah. and it runs down. And and that's the other thing. If you have that angle and you have that spin rate, yeah. even if you're throwing 85, 86, it plays 90. Oh, for sure. If you're throwing 90, 91, it plays 95. Like people are like, man, you look like you're pumping today. I'm like, dude, I was 92. You know? Yeah. Like it doesn't sound like I'm pumping. But, but also, also like, I love that. I love that. You just brought up a good point that we talk about all the time too, right? So this is where like I don't know how to explain this, but I think the measurement of velocity is wrong on a fastball. I don't think it should be miles per hour. I think it actually should be something closer to what they do with the missiles. In missiles, they do mil uh, they do meters per second, and because like your 92 and my 92 are different but the same number, especially with the approach angle, but also extension. So like I'm a seven two seven three extension guy, and you being six five, you have to be close yeah. to that, right? Yeah, so, like, I'm a seven one. Stroman, yeah. Yeah, Stroman throwing a 93 mile an hour four seamer at five foot extension is in the air so much earlier than, than right. right there. So, you know, just to right. describe your fastball a little more, more for the kids at home that, that follow us. So, we, we got almost elite extension, but I believe elite extension, is like DeGrom's got something crazy. It's like eight two or something. He's, yeah. Yeah, he's, that, he's unreal. Yeah, eight, he's unreal. eight, eight, eight dog. How are you eight? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, uh, I remember playing against him and DeGroom and AAA, man, watching those kids at 20 years old run real. Yeah, right, for sure. Um, yeah, the guys you've played with, my goodness. Um, so, anyway, so elite extension, he's getting out there, plus it's spinning 25, 2600. Major League average is like 2200. So, uh -huh. I, I like to talk about the jump to that, right? So, and then do you know what your tilt axis is? What do you uh, I, my, my, my my efficiency or no, my, so, my like the angle of spin? Uh, my, uh, I'm a one one to one to seven. Right, right. So you're you're the ball's basically spinning like yeah. right there. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to get as close as I can to twelve to six. I want as much backspin as I possibly can. Sometimes I might get on the side of it here, but I'm trying to think. I want this ball coming out of my hand. Sorry, I'm trying to get it. No, I want that ball coming out of my hand as much this spin as I can get. I don't. As soon as I get this, I start getting losing a little bit of control, and you start losing that extra gear that you talk about that we talk right, about. Right. The, the, the speed of release, the spin. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah, like that's, that's this, this all makes sense. Like, I didn't know, you know, when we were playing, I'm watching from the fan. I'm just watching that ball, like, especially in overgoing. I remember, like, just watching. That's such a good angle to watch a game for that bullpen. Uh, I'm real. I know that you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, like, just watching it carry, you know, as it goes. It just looks like it's yeah. floating through the catcher. And that's where yeah. you start wondering, like, well, like, Dudes don't give a shit if it's 92 sometimes, but sometimes they do, right? But I mean, yeah. just putting all the pieces together, that unique pitch profile on your fastball, it makes sense that that would be your, you know, 2,600 is very hard to get on top, especially like you're saying, you can have 
it may be one o'clock, but it also might turn into a one thirty. Have a little more arm side than what it is. Maybe you get right, right. one a little bit, and it's got a little jump to it. You know, so there's a lot of yeah. really good things that go into that pitch. So it makes sense while you're fast. And then, so breaking ball, slider or curveball? I throw a slider. I throw a slider. So I throw. I throw a bit too. Like it, it's almost too different the way I throw. It, but my back door is more of like I'm trying to steal strike, so it's more like that short little cut, like. Off of a off of a miss, right? Like I miss the fastball way. I'm trying to boom. I want that small. So on that one, I'm thinking I hold my slider like this. So I I get on top of the seam here with this finger, and this other one I'm running right here on the seam here, and I'm literally just thinking when I throw it back door, I'm thinking almost curveball where it comes out of my hand here. So I'm almost like getting it's it little, there. Now it's a little cutter, sir. Sir, that's a little cutter. I, well, it's, in it's like a cutter. But it's like a cutter, but mine's a, it, it, it's a it's a fiber. The way it moves. It's, we we um, call everybody words. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it moves. Yeah. So then, if I'm going over this side and I want that bigger swing and miss, it's the same thing. But I'm getting a little bit further on it here, that's and then I'm staying on it. Like we said, it's fastball, 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 and everything's coming here. Yeah. So I want to feel that seam yeah. there. It's not people want to create. People want to create with this. It's all it is. Is that wrist? It's fingers. So you just make it from here. It's that different, right? If people want to start creating and start getting this, and as soon as you start getting that, it's just going to start spinning. So it's all staying on fastball. We're out in front and feeling that ball coming out and using that pressure of it, using that pressure of it coming off your finger really, really well. Nice. But that comes to the same thing as our split, right? With all finger pressure. Like, how am I using my finger pressure? Right, and I and I want it to run that way, or if I'm running it, run it that way, or do I want it going straight down? Like, it's all finger pressure, and the only way you're going to do that is reps. Yeah, reps, 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 yeah. reps, 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 reps. So that that gets me good transition there. We 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 have some more commonalities in training. You said something to me about you know you beat the fact that you played year round, basically having six to eight weeks in between seasons. Can you explain your process? You know, because like you throw 250, I remember throwing my first 200 and being like, "All right, like, we gotta leave in two months, right?" Yeah. There has to be a certain level of mastery and information that you have about it. There's some light you can shed on how you were able to stay velo high, right? Because like I never didn't see you throwing 92, 93, and then you just told me you were 95, 97. So that's even yeah. more exciting. So like, yeah. and I'm sure you're there now too, like you know, on everything that I see. So yeah, what, I'm not getting 89, 91 now. Yeah, but what's the secret that you feel like was in being able to get you to throw for this long in professional baseball? So I know long pass is huge for people. I never got into it, like going like foul pole to foul pole, never really got into it. Um, the years I did do it, I did notice a difference in my, um, it was more of my off season training. I never, never in season would I long toss, but I noticed a big jump on that. But for me, I always went a minimum of 120 feet every day. So I'm going 120 to 160 every day, but I'm on a line. I'm never like, I'm never just lobbing the ball like, oh, here we go, nice and easy. We're not going nice and easy, right? I was always like, hey, I'm going to throw this ball on a line because everything we do is on a line. We're never lobbing the ball. So I've always just, with my catch, is played catch on a line. And also having a, per like, I take my catch very seriously. I always have. I don't like when you're sitting next to guys and they're just talking, oh, remember when you were out last night? Or, hey, you got this going on, like, this is, as a pitcher, playing catch is your only time to get yourself better. That's really the only time that, as a pitcher, we're doing our craft to get better, right? We don't have the luxury of hitting off the tee or hitting hitting uh, off a pitching machine. Like, playing catch is our work day. We have other drills that we can do that is, okay, we can do towel drill, and we can do, like, softballs down the mound, but that's not getting the reps of actual pitching. So when you're playing catch, playing catch with that purpose and actually, hey, have that conversation with your catch partner. That's your best feedback right there is your catch partner. Have a consistent catch partner that you play with catch with every day. I, I, I come into a team, hey, you're my catch partner. You're the, we're, we're together. There's no, you're going to someone else today. If you're going to be my guy, we're every day. Because I'm going to see your arm saw. I'm going to tell if you're sore because I see you play every day. If I see this coming down, hey, man, you barking a little bit today? What's going on? So getting a consistent catch partner, but that's where you're getting your work. So 
taking your catch seriously because it's the only time you get to really get better other than your bullpen work. And your bullpen work maybe twice a week. So I'm throwing 120 to 160 on a line with the purpose. Now off season, we can go a long toss because we're building arm strength and we're doing all of our shoulder, whatever that be, right? Everyone's different. But for me, playing catch. And let's say you have a catch partner that didn't want to go that long today. Heck, there's always BP. I stand in left field and I get every ball that goes to left field and I throw that thing on a line to the guy doing the bucket. I get my extra throws in. People are like, man, you're crazy. You throw all day. I'm like, yeah, that's why you're sore all the time, bro. Like you throw a, you throw a 40% effort bullpen and you play catch lobbing the ball with no effort and then you think you can turn it on once a week yeah. and, and not be sore. No, man, you got to train like you play. And that, that's the way I've always gone about it. I, I don't know if you ever seen me bull, bullpen. That bullpen told you me. I did. I did. I I'm full uni, like, and I go full uni, but I always miss mismatch. Like, I'll wear, like, the white jersey with the, the dark pants. Like, I just mess around, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, that's the other thing. Guys are throwing 20 pitch bullpens, and they're like, okay, they see me, and I'm throwing 60 pitch bullpens every time. I'm going first 20, just. You know, at 60 to 70 percent, getting a feel for everything. Then I'm going another 20 where I'm like jumping on it and we're, I'm just working on my stuff. And then I'm going 20 pitches where who do I got in this lineup? I'm facing, I'm facing the Giants. Okay, I'm gonna have three at bats with runners in scoring position at bats against their top three hitters: lefty, a lefty, a righty, or then I or I go two lefties and a righty, vice versa. But if you can already visualize it and you've already done it, by the time you get into that situation, it's just like clockwork, man. I've already, like People are like, man, you're crazy. You train like that. You train like that. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's why I go seven, eight innings and you're gassed after five, bro. Like, I train differently than you. My arm's ready to do this. My body's ready to do this. That's why you're able to throw 150 live BPs to kids yeah. because you train that way. If you were just lobbing the ball at 90 feet twice a week and then throwing a 20 pitch bullpen, would you be able to do what you're doing? No yeah. chance. No right. chance. So for me, it's just the reps. It's reps, reps, reps. Like having that purpose when you play catch, throwing through your guy, not throwing to him, throwing through him on a line, having the feedback conversation with your catch partner. I work out at my junior college here. Uh, I'm, I'm from Susanville, so it's last community college up in Northern California. But I've been working out here for the last nine years, and I've had the same catch partner. He, he's a young kid. I started with him when he was in college, and now he's actually one of the coaches there. And he went on to play. And but like kids will watch us play catch. The kids will literally watch us play catch and they're like, Why do you guys talk to each other? I'm like, Because, bro, like that's where you're gonna get your feedback. My my pitching coach is watching twenty other guys play catch. You think he has time to watch me? Right. So that's you gotta be your own pitching coach and your friend's pitching coach to really build off of one another. Um and that's another thing. I always in my catch. Always in my catch playing twenty one. You play that ever? Three, oh, yeah. two, one. Oh, yeah. I always in I always in my catch playing twenty one. Always. Every day of catch we're playing twenty one because it's that fine focus. Like we have focus, right? Like people thought, be focused, be focused. Well what's focus? What do you tell me to focus on? Like when you have that fine focus of what I'm actually focusing on, okay, I'm focusing in for this head right here, or I'm focusing for chest. It's a whole different focus and you're getting your mind trained on a daily basis of that game like like we said. Throwing is when we're playing catch is our only time to get better. So we're also training ourselves mentally while we play catch. As far as having that competitive, it's also competitive, but also having that fine focus, mental mental fine focus of why we're playing catch. Awesome. Love so those are, those are my those are my secrets, man. That's that's right. it. Yeah. So so you've been you just haven't stopped throwing. Yeah. Right. What's the longest you've taken off? Yeah, six weeks. Six weeks, and I felt like I got hit by a truck. It took me two months to get back in the shape. Oh, it was, never again. Never but again. I did, it, was, it was this last year. I got done with winter ball because normally I leave. I'll, I'll finish a winter ball season, you know, playoffs mid-January, and I'm gone February 1st in Taiwan, and I'm starting spring training. I'm just going. Right. And last year, I didn't have a contract, so I was going to Mexico. So I took off. Um, I made it the whole year. So February 1st to March 20th, I took off. And I mean, I was playing. I took. I think I took five weeks off of no throwing, but was working out. Oh my god, it was miserable, dude. I could not find my arm slot. I was 87, 88 for the first couple spring training games. But it's crazy when you find it. Like it's always come back to me in a dream. I'll have a dream where I'm like, okay, front side, and I just feel it in my dream. And I'll call my wife. I'm like, I had the dream. She's like, all right, you're good then. Next day, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back to where I need to be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, exactly. But like, it's like riding a bike when you do it every day. 
it's going to you jump on a buggy. I haven't ridden a bike in five years, but I promise if I jumped on one, it might be a little wobbly for the first five minutes. But after that, I'm going to be doing weeding. You know what I mean? It's just training yourself to where it's automatic, man. Like the, the, we talked about the the athlete and the elite athlete. The elite athlete doesn't have to think of the, think about the the small things that a regular athlete has to think about, right? I'm thinking about the the long term big things. Like I'm thinking, okay, how am I adjusting to that pitch? Where the 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 regular athlete thinking, okay, I got to be mechanically sound here. An elite athlete isn't thinking any of that. None of that. He's thinking about, dude, you're not taking food off my table. That's what, I, that's what my wife and I, I tell my wife all the time. I say, when this guy steps in, he's trying to take food off my table, man. I've been doing this for 16 years. This is how I provide for my family. This is the only way I've made money in my life is throwing a baseball. I've been blessed. But this is the only way I know how to provide, and I know I'm better than you, and I outwork you, and I'm going to beat you. And if you beat me, boom, there you go, brother. Congrats. Yep. Love it. Love it, dude. dude that's awesome. I, th I think we got it. We nailed it. We've been rocking for about an hour. Yeah, uh, buddy, you're you're an amazing human. I can't wait to follow your journey. You know, as as your as everything continues, I, I appreciate you taking some time on here and sharing some secrets and and you know talking pitching. You know, because you know you go MLB Network and you get online and like, just like what you said, like, like I could give two shits what your mechanics are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I really could. The process is what I want to know about. What are you thinking when? We face the same guys. When you face the same guys, you have commonalities and you don't. You know what I mean? You, and that's you, you, that. you, you face yeah. somebody totally different than the way I'm going to face them. 100%. You know what I mean? You know, and, yeah. and the, that is what is the best about the game to me. It's like everybody's got a different way to do it. You know, and, and their success is it's solely dependent on their execution and their game plan and what they're doing. And the best pitchers that I ever played with or saw, like yourself, seem to have a pretty solid game plan, you know? Yeah. And I just don't hear that talk online all the time. And I hear back leg extension, force play, track. Mechanics. Mechanics. Yeah, when, mechanics. When, I'm, when I'm on the mound, <laughs> that's what bullpens are for, man. Bullpens are for, for going through those process. When I'm in the game, mechanics, like that we talked about, like I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking of my plan and how I'm executing this plan. I'm not thinking my mechanics because it's so drilled into my head that's just non-existent to think about that when I'm pitching. I don't have time for that. I have so much other stuff going on. Right. So, it's going um, right there. Yeah. yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> um, but awesome. we're going to have to get together again, man, because i got to teach you the old... Uh, oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? Before we go, can you walk us through that? That's what, what I forgot about that. Let's do that real quick. So I was when you stepped away earlier, I kind of told everybody that like that was your viral moment. So like but like I said, you did that against us. Yeah. And I remember like, did you I and of course like, I'm in the dugout. Like that was in Laguna, right? Laguna? In, no, in, 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 no, I was in Tabasco. I was in Tabasco. Tabasco. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did it in Tabasco. And I remember being like, Did anybody see this? And like yeah. nobody I was like, there was only, I was the only English speaking guy anyway. So, like, I didn't yeah. know how to, like, mira, mira. Like, I, don't, I can't even explain what he did in Spanish. It was in one hand and then it wasn't. Anyway. So I've, done the, I've done this three different times in games just because it's like, it's, I'm playing baseball, man. Have fun. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> like it's, I've been doing this since I was five years old. I'm going to have fun while I'm doing it. And uh, so, the thing is, it's called the hidden ball trick. Actually, you saw the kid that did it, right? Yeah. The kid that ended up going viral, I wrote on his thing. I was like, dude, you pulled it out perfectly. He's like, thanks, man. And then like 10 minutes later, he's like, no, you're the guy I got that from. <laughs> <laughs> but so I do a regular lineup. Whoop. Sorry. So I have a lineup just for the backstory. I have my regular lineup. I go here and I go around like this and then I come up. It's Satchel Page, right? Like, like Satchel Page used to. So what I'm doing is thumb my fingers out. So I go finger guard. That's another thing. Like people go out, you don't know about tipping, but maybe you're digging and you're moving your foot. You, or, it's, I pick people like it's nobody's business. But yeah, for sure. But, but we all do that. So I go back behind here like this, and I put in the ball behind my finger like that. So it's like that. So I'm back here like this. But when I pull the glove up, I'm not pulling the glove up this way because you'll see the ball, correct? Right. So I'm pulling the glove like this where I shoot the pocket. So you can't see the ball. Can't see the ball, can't see the ball. Now you can see the ball. <laughs> so you're going back like this, and you legitimately just come up the side here, come up, boom, there it is. I'm showing you it, da 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 da, boom, there's the ball. 
the 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 wave is my favorite part. The oh, wave is by far. What's that, man? Yeah, hey, man. Like, What's that? Here. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. watching that live, and, and they're like, and half, you know, here Tabasco, half our team wasn't even present for what was going on. I was trying to get somebody's attention, and they were like, no, he, he can't do that. I'm like, I, I don't even, I don't know. We're in a different country. Y'all don't play the same rules that we play. I don't know if you're allowed to do this. Yeah, I had been, I'd been, I'd been working on that for like four years, like actually practicing with it and everything. And then in, um, uh, in 2016, I got released from Laguna. And it was the last game of the year. I was in Reynosa, just an amazing city. Um, <laughs> it was just, it was a bad situation. The team I was on, things like that. It was the last game of the year. We're in last place. I'm closing out the game and I'm facing my old team. I have two outs, 0 2. I'm like, we're in Mexico, man. I'm going to do it. And I literally did that and I piped it 96 down the middle. He looked at it and literally I'm walking off and he's like looking at me, like kicking his gloves off, like, what the heck was that? And I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> but, yeah, but then I, I did it against you guys. I did it in Venezuela and then in Taiwan, the one that went viral as well. But that one, that yeah, powerful sure. time. The one powerful time, it was in the All-Star game. Everyone's like, oh, you gave up a double. I'm like, dude, it was an All-Star game, number one. I loved it in at 800 miles an hour, and the guy popped it up on a dead ball. I'm like, who cares? And I was just laughing at the umpire because it's like, yeah, man, cool, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm all, oh, oh, you're having fun, man. And like, Big baseball fun of you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know, I love that. I love that. Awesome. So kids at home, pull it off. You know, shout out Mitch Lively. Obviously, if you just post a video and tag him, he'll comment back, especially if you pull it off. So let's yeah. just now that now that we're calling um we're throwing kids out for having fun on home runs. Like what's I'm doing, man. baseball. People would, I get that question all the time. Hey, you get mad when the guy pimps one off you? I'm like, why would I get mad at that? <laughs> if I if, if I uh, if I strike him out in a big situation, I'm gonna fist pump. I'm gonna, you know, get excited. I'm. It's part of the game. Like, man, hitting a home run's not and not easy. It's hard. Right. So right. if you do it and you know you got it, pimp it. Now you pimp it and it doesn't get out. Now you just you put your tail between your legs and you walk back into that dugout. <laughs> If I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but every other country has like a team celebration, right? Like, yeah, for real. Like, the Dominicans, Dominicans leave the dugout, so leave Venezuela. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure in Japan they have some kind of like tunnel yeah, thing or something. They'll do like, a, they do like a tunnel thing. Or like right. in, in, Japan, in Japan, when they hit home runs, they get like a stuffed animal and they go through their buddies. Like they line up and they give high fives and then they'll throw like the stuffed animal out to the fans yeah. and then they do cool. whatever, like in the camera. Like, what is it, man? Like, why can't we have fun doing this? Right. I don't get it. Like, can someone throw me a stuffed animal if I strike out two in inning? I'm throwing. I'm. I'm throwing. I'm biting my head off and throwing it in. Yeah, the that's first that's that's right. Like, that, <laughs> dude, when I when I when I punch you out with bases loaded, you know, I'm gonna give a big fist pump and up. You know what I mean? Like, it's just gonna happen. So, yeah. for a guy to hit a home run off me and pimp it, dude, and half the time I'm not even watching because I'm going, oh crap. <laughs> Because that's what I said, I'm like, no, I'm trying to get that bad off as it's going through the air. Yeah. But, After Hoffman hit it over me, I couldn't even tell you what he did. I was watching it go. Dude, oh, wow, man. <laughs> like, there, there's a couple in there hit it. I'm like, man, I just want to see how far this went. Like, oh, man. Speaking but, of, there, there's I, I, last thing before we go. Did you happen to see the home run Art Charles hit in Pueblo? Yeah. That is a huge human being, by the way. Oh, yeah. It's another human being. Yes. He's another large yeah. Human. You want to hit it out of the stadium? Yeah. I, I, try, I was trying to explain some kids. I'm like, you don't, first of all, you don't understand what that field is like and what's happening there. Second yeah. of all, do you have far, like five, it was like five seven? I think it was five, 570 or 580, something like that. Yeah. It's, I, like, I, it's like a foot, it's like one or two feet below the record, whatever the record is. Do you hear it in Pueblo or Oaxaca? No, he hit it no, in Pueblo. He hit Pueblo. Someone else hit, I, someone hit one in Pueblo as well last year. That was like five something. Yeah, he hit it in Pueblo because I remember the, there's that bathroom in right field that's right there. Yeah. And Oaxaca yeah. has the stands. Yeah. We, yeah. When we were playing there, we had a lady get, how about this? We had a lady get ambulanced off because one of our Venezuelans hit a hit one 12 feet off the ground and she was holding popcorn, like trying to sit down. It hit her in the chest, exploded popcorn everywhere. 
The trainer goes from first base to right field, hops the fence. They call the ambulance and keep the game plan. And I'm like, yeah. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. That's one thing I was so happy about that baseball decided to do is put those nets up, man. Like, oh, yeah. the, the amount of fans that I've seen lose faces or lose teeth or go to the hospital is just unreal, man. Like, you don't understand. These balls are coming out at 100 plus, and you. I couldn't even catch it if it, uh, it was coming at me, and let alone you know a kid or an adult, a parent, old lady. Like uh, that was, I know we're not getting on that topic, but I'm so happy that baseball decided to do that. For sure, hundred percent. Yes, safety first for sure. Yeah. All right, my friend. Well, look, it, it's been amazing. I'll see yeah. some clips from this. This is really good. Thank you so much for your time. For sure, we got to do it again. Hope yeah, hit me up anytime, man. We, we got to play catch for sure. We'll definitely. I told you I'll come down. I'll we'll come down. Some, we'll, we'll get some one twenties on the line. I'm, I'm always. <laughs> I, love, I love a good riff of Yeah, you know I mean? for sure, yeah. for sure. All right, All right brother. I appreciate you having me. So much. Have a good, have a good one. one. See ya.